alkyl sulfonates are great electrophiles for nucleophilic substitution and elimination reactions, and they react very similarly to alkyl halides. In fact, so similarly that they're often called pseudo halides. The basis of this idea is that the sulfonate group right here in the sulfonate anion is a fantastic leaving group. And the resonance stabilization, which we see right here, is good evidence of that. This is a highly stabilized anion, very, very, very weak base, very stable. And so it's a fantastic leaving group in SN and E reactions. And alkyl sulfonates react very similarly to alkyl halides. We've actually seen in another video that these very stable anions have conjugate acids that can be used as acidic reagents and are even in strong acid territory with negative pKa values. Things like triflic or trifluoromethane sulfonic acid, paratoluene sulfonic acid, and methane sulfonic acid are actually used as acidic reagents in organic reactions. And we also saw that we can prepare alkyl sulfonates using these sulfonyl chlorides, which bring the SO2R group in, attached to a chlorine. So this is an electrophilic sulfur atom right here that reacts with the nucleophilic oxygen of an alcohol, ultimately converting the alcohol, ROH, into a sulfonate such as ROTS, an alkyl tosylate. And this happens with retention of configuration since carbon is actually not involved at all in the alcohol, only the alcohol oxygen is involved as a nucleophile. Now, the ideas we've developed about alkyl halides and how they react with nucleophiles slash bases to do substitution and elimination apply just as well to alkyl tosylates. So, for example, in this first case, we've got a secondary tosylate reacting with bromide, a good nucleophile, and negligibly weak base, so we're going to see SN2 reaction with inversion of configuration. In the second case, we have a primary tosylate reacting with hydroxide, that's a good nucleophile and good base, so the major product is going to come from SN2 substitution with elimination as a minor side product. And then finally here we have a secondary tosylate reacting with NaOH again, that's a good nucleophile and good base, and with the secondary tosylate substrate, we're going to get elimination as the major product in this case with SN2 substitution, a minor side pathway. These ideas flow from ideas about SN2 versus SN1 versus E2 versus E1 that we've already seen for, for alkyl halides and for sulfonates, the exact same heuristics apply. Let's look at some examples of predicting the major and minor products when these toluene sulfonate compounds react with various nucleophiles slash bases. So we're going to follow the same process here that we did previously with alkyl halides, looking at the alkyl halide structure, the alkyl sulfonate structure, the electrophile structure, I should say, then considering the nucleophile slash base and other aspects of the reaction conditions, inferring the mechanism, and then thinking about regiochemistry and stereochemistry as applicable. So here in the first case, we have a secondary alkyl tosylate, cyclohexyl tosylate right here. Here's our electrophilic carbon, and OTS is a good leading group. If we think about NaOH here, NaOH contains OH minus. OH minus is a good nucleophile, negative charge, makes it a good nucleophile, but it's also a good base, great base, in fact. And with this secondary substrate, the good base is going to predominantly engage in E2 elimination. So the major product here is going to be the corresponding alkene, which in this case will be cyclohexene. We'll also probably see minor amounts of the SN2 substitution product, which in this case is going to be cyclohexanol, like so. But this will be the minor product. The major product will be derived from E2 elimination, cyclohexene. All right. In the second case, we've got a bit of an indirect route where we're starting with an alcohol, OH here. This gets converted into OTS. So I'm just going to make a note of that, that this gets converted into OTS. And that is a good leaving group. And so we're setting up a situation where this carbon, originally connected to the OH group, is now electrophilic. It's connected to a good leaving group after this first step treatment with tosyl chloride and pyridine. So here we have a secondary alkyl tosylate after the first step, and the reagent we're using here is tert butoxide, potassium tert butoxide, where it's the tert butoxide anion here that's really doing the business. Now this is a bulky base, so it's a good base, 
and it's quite bulky, which tends to discourage substitution, SN2 substitution, right? So the, the major product here is uh, going to be an elimination product, and not only will it be an E2 elimination pro product, but because this is bulky, because the tert-butyl group is quite bulky, we're going to end up with the Hoffman alkene as the major product here. So the major product will be the less substituted alkene derived from deprotonation at the methyl group over here. We deprotonate here to establish the double bond here. And this, this is the major product. The minor product will be derived from Zaitsev elimination. And we may see none of this at all with the very bulky tert-butyl uh, tert butoxide there, but the major product will be the less substituted Hoffman product here for sure. The last case, we've got a similar situation going on where we have an OH group here, originally not a good leaving group on its own, but gets converted into a tosylate, OTS, and this is a good leaving group, and this makes the carbon attached to that OTS group a good electrophile, and now we're dealing with a primary alkyl tosylate in this case. And the nucleophile slash base in this case is ethoxide, OET minus. Now, OET minus, similar to OH minus, it's a good nucleophile, and it's also a good base. And so what happens is going to depend on the substitution pattern of the alkyl tosylate. Here, it's a relatively unhindered primary alkyl tosylate, and so SN2 is going to be the major reaction pathway here. And so we'll get substitution at that electrophilic carbon highlighted in purple, and the final product here is going to be the ethyl ether with an OET group, replacing the OH group ultimately that was present in the alcohol substrate. The moral of the story of these three examples is that alkyl sulfonates behave exactly like alkyl halides when they're treated with nucleophiles slash bases. The same ideas we've already seen apply to alkyl sulfonates as well. One of the reasons that sulfonates are highly useful as electrophiles in SN and E reactions is that alcohols do not undergo these reactions in the presence of nucleophiles or, or bases. Hydroxide is a poor leaving group, and the OH group, the hydroxyl group, is susceptible to proton transfer with very strong nucleophiles and, and, and bases. So we either see no reaction at all in the case of a weak nucleophile, weak base, or um, deprotonation at oxygen, forming an alkoxide in the presence of a strong base. We can get around this issue, though, by converting to the sulfonate, for example, the tosylate, and then adding the nucleophile or base. So all three of these reactions, as written, have problems. When we treat ethanol with bromide, no reaction occurs uh, because the hydroxyl group is a poor leaving group. This is not, OH- is not the conjugate base of a strong acid. Likewise with acetate, the acetate anion is um, uh, solid nucleophile, but OH- is not a good leaving group, so no reaction occurs here. And in the presence of a very strong nucleophile like NH2-, we actually see deprotonation of the OH group forming a sodium alkoxide instead of the desired amine, for example, with an NH2 group substituting for OH. But we can first convert the OH group into an OTS group, and now all of this reactivity is all of a sudden enabled. For example, we can treat ethyl tosylate with sodium bromide, and the SN2 reaction goes off without a hitch, giving the uh, ethyl bromide product that we were looking for here. We can similarly get an ester if we treat the ethyl tosylate with this uh, sodium acetate, and we end up with ethyl acetate, this product here via, again, an SN2 reaction, and we can treat ethyl tosylate with NaNH2, and we'll get some amount of SN2 substitution, but also probably quite a bit of uh, ethylene via E2 elimination here. The point being that, in essence, we have displaced OH as a leaving group by first converting it to a tosylate and then hitting with the nucleophile or base. There's actually another way to convert OH into a good leaving group that doesn't involve conversion to a sulfonate. And it involves the use of a strong acid to protonate the alcohol oxygen and produce a species that can lose water as a leaving group. Water is a good leaving group since it is the conjugate base of hydronium, which is right there on the edge of strong acid. So for example, when you take an alcohol and you treat it with a hydrohalic acid 
or hydrogen halide like HBr, protonation of the alcohol oxygen can take place. This generates the good leaving group, OH2+, and now this primary um, electrophile is susceptible to SN2 reaction with the bromide anion that was produced in this first trans uh, proton transfer step. So SN2 is enabled via protonation of the alcohol oxygen. This occurs uh, via SN2 when the alcohol is primary. For a tertiary alcohol, we can protonate again and lose water again to get a relatively stable carbocation here. And so loss of a leaving group can take place here, a kind of SN1 type reactivity, and now bromide can come in and attack that carbocation. It's a nucleophilic attack step, and we get the tertiary alkyl bromide via an SN1 reaction. And of course, if the um, conjugate base of the acid used is a decent base, we might see E1 elimination, or the temperature is elevated, for example, we might see E1 elimination. And one thing you want to watch out for here is because we're going through a carbocation, carbocation rearrangements are in play. So the overarching moral of the story here is that in the presence of a strong acid capable of protonating the alcohol OH group, we generate the good leaving group OH2+, and that can depart to form a carbocation when that carbocation is relatively stable or the cation can directly engage in SN2 reaction, in the case of a primary substrate, with the conjugate base of the acid, something like Br minus, Cl minus, or I minus, or common uh, nucleophiles that you see in this context, because those acids, HBr, HCl, HI, are great at protonating the hydroxyl oxygen. When the acid used does not have a nucleophilic conjugate base, H2SO4 being the classic example, elimination occurs. Since the conjugate base is not a good nucleophile, it's going to do proton transfer instead. And typically water, the small amount of water that's present in concentrated H2SO4 will be the base in cases like this. So for example, we can use concentrated H2SO4 as an acid to protonate that alcohol OH group. That gets us to this cation that we're familiar with at this point, and that can lose water to form a carbocation without any good nucleophile around and at elevated temperature in the presence of heat, water is going to serve as a base and deprotonate to give an alkene, and this occurs via an E1 reaction. In the case of a primary substrate, we are not going to generate a carbocation. We're going to do an E2 elimination with loss of the water leaving group and deprotonation at a beta carbon at the same time. This gives the alkene via an E2 mechanism. Just to back up really quickly with the E1 reaction, you want to watch out for carbocation rearrangements here as usual when a carbocation intermediate is involved. And it's important when you're looking at a primary alcohol, even under these strongly acidic conditions, avoid a primary carbocation. Instead, primary alcohols in the presence of H2SO4 and heat are going to react through an E2 mechanism that avoids a carbocation intermediate.